Our scripture today is from the book of Ephesians. Book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. Uh, You're welcome to look that up in in the Bible if you have it. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that not only do you hear our prayers, but you also teach us. You lead and you guide us, and we pray that this is a moment like that. As we read your word, open up our hearts that we may receive what it is that you have for us, that we may know you all the more. We pray also that the expounding upon your word is, uh, is blessed by you and that you're able to use it for your glory. But if it's not from you, we pray it's forgotten. And we thank you for your activity even in this moment. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. Hear now God's word. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, Desire, uh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. <clears throat> and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I I really, really, really wanted to show you a video, uh, but I couldn't get it to work. And so I'm going to describe the video, which is going to be an awful experience. Uh, So I ask you to hang in there. Um, It was a YouTube video, and and I didn't want the whole thing. I just wanted bits and pieces. So I'm going to learn how to do that. I just uh, wasn't able to do that today. But uh, have you ever heard of um, the Big Bang Theory? Not not the theory, um, but the the television show. Sheldon Cooper and Penny and, and uh, Leonard and all, all them. Uh, well, in it, uh, Sheldon and Penny have a, a unique relationship. Uh, Sheldon's a unique individual in himself. And he has this theory. Uh, he doesn't like receiving gifts because then he feels obligated to, re- to return the gift um, uh, to you know reciprocate by by giving a gift of equal or greater value of the gift that he has been given, and he's all in a tizzy in this episode because uh, uh, Penny just told him that she's going to give him a gift, and he doesn't know what the gift is, so he's not sure if he can reciprocate prop- properly. So he has this this big plan. He goes out shopping. And he buys a whole bunch of gifts, all of different price tiers. Uh, do you remember this episode, some, some, some of you? So he goes out and he buys a whole bunch of gifts, all different price tiers. And he hides them in his bedroom so that when Penny does give him the gift, then he will feign like he has a stomachache, go back to the bedroom and get the proper gift to return, you know, to, to reciprocate properly. So uh, Penny comes in with the gifts, and, and she gives him the gift. And the gift is a napkin that is signed uh, by Leonard ne- ne- Nimoy, who is like one of his greatest he- he- heroes. 
And uh, not only is it uh, who played Spock, for, for those who may not know, played Spock on Star, Star, Star Trek. And uh, not only is it signed by him, but he also wiped his mouth with it. And, and th he's, he's so excited because now he feels like he can clone him if ever he wanted to, you know, have his own Leonard Nimoy running around his house. That sort of thing. Uh, but he's so, so, so excited uh, that he goes into the, the room and he brings out all of the gifts to give them to her, and he feels like it's still not enough, and then he gives her a hug, which he hates human contact of any kind. Uh, so this is very, very big for, her, uh, for him. The, the idea of uh, reciprocating with a proper gift is not unknown to us. Uh, sure, during someone's birthday, we give someone a, a gift, uh, but I think oftentimes when we give someone a gift, we do so with knowledge, and at least in our mind, of uh, what gift do they deserve? You know, what gift would make them happy? What gift would they um, realize just how much I care? And we give different gifts to our spouses than we give to total strangers. The spouses, or, or, or loved ones for that matter, the, the gift that we give to our loved ones, we do so with the knowledge of what they've done for us. We do so with the appreciation of their, their lives, of who they are. And we try our best to give them the best gift that adequately encompasses how we feel. Now, sometimes that can be a difficult endeavor. Um, sometimes it's easy. But the neat thing about all of this is God gave us a gift. God's gift, as we know, is the gift of His Son, Jesus. The gift of time, as we talked about in in our children's chat. That God gave us a gift that showed us how much God loved us. God gave us a gift that in, encompassed God's whole desire for us. God wants us by God's side for all eternity. That's the, the, the strength of God's gift. That's the strength of God's desire for us in our lives. Tell you what, that's a pretty big gift. When I think about that sometimes, how much God loves me, I stand in awe. And, and, and not just in awe, I stand confused. How can God love me so much? What have I done? What, what have I to offer God that God wants me by God's side, not just for now, but forever? You know, I, I get a flashback to my days in, in uh, elementary school and, and um, middle school and high school. Uh, I, I am thoroughly, through and through, uh, both a geek and a nerd. I'm very proud of, of that fact, that I'm a, a geek and a nerd, and I embrace it. Part of that identity for me, though, and, and geeks and nerds are defined differently, but part of that identity for me is that I was also not very good at sports. And, and I was gangly, and I was um, uh, uncoordinated, and an amusing past tense language when I should still be using present tense language because I'm still all of that. And I'm okay with that, but that always meant that I was chosen for dodgeball last. I was seen as more of a liability than I was seen as any benefit. Uh, any sports teams, any... Uh, I remember a time in gym class that we were learning wrestling. Uh, not WWE kind of wrestling. Um, but, you know, the, the high school sort of wrestling. And the, the wrestling, the, the gym teacher decided to use me as the example for how to use different moves. And, of course, I had no chance whatsoever. And he had me locked up in this one hole. I don't even know what it was. I just remember never seeing the back of my knee before. And he said, Justin, can you get out of this? And I said, absolutely, I, I could get, get out of this. And he said, well, try. I said, I don't feel like it today. I, you, of course, there was no chance I could get out of that. I mean, and this kind of summed up my high school sports career, uh, which was none. Um, and yet, God chose me. 
without ever even thinking about it, with, with, without ever even weighing any of the consequences, God just said, I want you. And he did that for all of us. That through Jesus Christ, the gift that we've been given is that Christ desires us and wants us on his team. Not seeing us as a liability, but a benefit, a, a gift, a blessing. And that's a phenomenal gift. How do you repay that back? I don't think we ever ad- adequately can but we can't do something about it. The final scripture in our reading today, I think, kind of helps remind us what we can do about it. Verse 10 here. For we are what He has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. God loves us. And wants us, not just for a short amount of time, but God wants us for all eternity. How do we pay that back? Well, one, we can't. But we can live a life of gratitude. A life of doing the good works that God created us to to, to do. I am built differently than all of you. I can do things that you can't do and vice versa, you can do things that I can't do. Together, we can reach all kinds of different people. Together, we can love all kinds of people who feel as though nobody loves them. Together, we can do the good works that God created us for and has prepared beforehand to be our way of life. One of the biggest ways we can show God thank you for choosing us is by living those good works which has been prepared for us. And I pray that we do so graciously and happily and full of love and full of joy. And I thank God for the life that he has prepared us for. And close with this benediction. From Romans 15, 5 to 6. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Go in peace knowing that the love of God will be with you always.